It's time for Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Join us as we study the uncompromised Word of God and how it can be applied to our everyday lives. Awesome. Well, you can be seated here this morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, so excited to be here at RCC. Uh, and what, what a great day to be in church and uh, excited uh, just to minister and encourage and to challenge you here today. Of course, we've already been encouraged by worship. Uh, amazing, amazing job. And yes, like Wes said, I've known him uh, for a long time. I remember, I don't know why, but I think I was here the Sunday that, that Wes was hired on. So we've known each other that long. And I've visited RCC over the years uh, so uh, for, for, for such a long time. So I feel definitely a part of the RCC family, and I'm honored to be here uh, to minister uh, to you today. Well, today we're going to be talking about who am I? Who am I? And uh, who are we? How, how do we define that? You know, do we define ourselves by what we do? Do we define ourselves by our talent? Do we define ourselves by our status, our, our, our status in society, our status here in Russellville or the surrounding areas, or maybe even by some of the things um, uh, that we have accomplished in the past? And we talk about those things over and over because that's how we identify uh, ourselves. Do relationships define us? Are we looking for a relationship? to define us? Do our experiences, does our families define us? You know, I really went over all the different things that really can define us in, in life. D does what you're going through right now, maybe you're going through a difficult time, does that define who you are or who we are? Does your job define who you are? I am my job. My question is, what happens when you retire? Or what happens when you lose your job? Do you lose who you are? Are you no longer the person that you once were? Does your intelligence define you? What happens when you're no longer the smartest person in the room and someone else is more intelligent than you are? What about our financial status, right? We are how much money we have in our bank account. Well, we all know that that can change very quickly. And what happens when we have to downsize or we have to, to get rid of things? Are we ashamed? Are we no longer who we once were? Popularity, fame, friend group. I mean, I, I just, I really start thinking about all the things that we, we can put on as the definition of us, Right? So many things that can define this is who I am. And so that's really my question today is how do, do we identify ourselves? How do we define who we are? Because I think, I think there, is, there is this pressure that we can all feel to answer that question. I know especially in the high school and college years, you can really begin to ask, who am I? And we feel that pressure to answer that question of who am I? am I? And I think some phases in life, it's easier to answer those questions. And then I, I, th and I think that's a roller coaster. I think there's some phases in life where we feel real secure. This is who I am. And then I think there could be some phases in life where we start to question, who am I? I'm, I'm not who I once was, or I'm not who I'm going to be, or where am I at now right here in the middle? I mean, I just think some moments are, are easier to define who we are than others. The word identity, if you look it up in the dictionary, it is the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. That's what an identity is. It's, it's the distinguishing character or personality of an, an individual. Basically, our identity is how we define who we are. And so I want to ask you today, when someone says your name, what comes to mind? When you look in the mirror every day, what do you see? If your name was, was to be called out from the pulpit, what would you hear about yourself? When, when we say David paid, and, and, and of course, what Wesley was frustrating me because I was thinking about, whoa, I do too much. And, uh, but but when, when, when I hear the name David Pate, 
Do I hear coach? Do I hear dad? Do I hear pastor? Do I hear husband? Do I hear bodybuilder, model, winner? I'm not saying all the things you hear in your head are true. <laughs> but, but come on, what, what do we hear? When you, when you hear the word Dylan Lichty, you may think different thoughts than he does, but, but what goes through your head? Wesley Boster, what goes through your head? What do we hear about ourselves? What comes to mind? Does businesswoman come to mind? Does mom, dad, athlete, student, rich, poor, successful, unsuccessful, a lot of friends, not a lot of friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, what comes to mind? What is that thing that identifies us? What do we hear? Because we all have these things in our head that identify who we are. And this matters. Why does this matter? Because everything you and I do stems from our identity. Everything you and I do, it stems from our identity. Everything stems from how we see ourselves in the mirror. It affects how we live our daily lives. It affects how we interact with people. It affects whether we see ourselves as being worthy of being used by God or not. It affects of whether we're confident in who we are in this moment or not. Our identity affects everything. And if I could be honest and transparent here this morning, this, this last year, I, I, I went through a very difficult moment. I went through a who am I moment because for the last 18 years, I have identified myself as the men's varsity basketball coach of Christian Ministries Academy. I've done that for the last 18 years. And, and this last year, I knew in my heart of hearts that it was time to do something different. And I had a guy sitting next to me who I believed that God had called to take this team over, this program that, that, that I had built for the last 18 years, these young men that I've been a part of their lives. And I knew that meant that I would no longer probably be the number one figure in their lives. Some of these guys that were on the bench at the time. And there's a guy by the name of Stuart Berryhill that has taken over the team this year. And, you know, he asked me during this process, in fact, I believe we have the best men's team we've ever had in the history of our school this year. And I was turning that over to him, but I knew that it was God's call on his life for this time and no longer mine. I believe that God had called me to some different things. And, and, and he asked me during this process of, of turning this over to him, he said, are you sure? And I said, no. But what I am sure of is that this is what God has for us at this time. But I remember during this process, who am I now? If I'm no longer the men's basketball coach at Christian Ministries Academy, who am I now? And to watch someone else walk into the role that I used to have is very, very difficult. Because I'd identified myself that for a very long time. Now, I'm still coaching basketball, just not the men's team. And that was very difficult because who am I? See, we're all born with this need for something, this need to belong, this need to be someone, this need to matter to someone, this need to achieve, this need to make a difference. And here's the heart of what I want to get to you today. If you're taking notes and want to write something down, here's the heart of what I want to talk about is do you belong to something temporary or do you belong to something stronger than that? Do you belong to something temporary? Or is your identity something that is stronger than, than something that is temporary? Because coaching basketball is very, very temporary. Because, and, and, and uh, here's what I learned, is our identity can have an ending. I want to ask you, does your identity, the thing that you're wrapping everything up into, does it, have an, does it have an ending? Because your identity on this earth was never meant to have an ending. I'm learning that everything we do is temporary. Everything we do. Come on, if you've been here on this earth very long, you've learned that everything is temporary. Everything has a phase. It has an ending to it, right? That's just, that's just our life here on this earth. Everything has a beginning and an end, right? Money has a very long beginning and a very short end, right? It seemed like it took forever to get this and it was, didn't take very long to get rid of that, right? Stuff 
has a beginning and an end. You know, you, you buy something, you're so excited about it for 24 hours, and then when you're loading it up in your truck to take it to the dumpster, you ask yourself, why did we buy this? Right? Why did we buy this? You know, jobs have a beginning and an end. Friends have a beginning and an end. Seasons in life are very temporary. Relationships. I was thinking about all the different phases of relationships. You know, you have, you, you have the meeting phase, the dating phase, the engaged phase, and the very, very, very short honeymoon phase. They were moving on past that. And, and, then, you, and then you have the, the young kid phase, then the mid-kid phase, and they're out of the house, the empty nest phase, and the grandkid phase. I mean, you think about relationships and, and all the different phases that, that life has. But these moments are very temporary for, for us. And when you hold tight to temporary things, you can suffer very sad losses. And I'm not saying that we should be cold and have no emotion. That's not what I'm saying today. But our identity can't be wrapped up in these earthly, temporary things. Our identity can't be wrapped up in these things. We need to all appreciate where we are right now. I'm not, I'm not here to, to say be cold with where we're at now. All right, kids, just grow up and get out of here. That's not, that's not what I'm saying, right? But, but I'm saying we should, we should enjoy those things but they should not define who we are. If you have young kids right now, enjoy them, love them, kiss all over their sweet, cute faces, right? Do that. If you're dating right now, I'm happy for you, right? We're all real happy for your soppy love. If you're dating right now, enjoy that. If you're in high school, enjoy that. If you're in college, enjoy that. But you know what? If you're retired, enjoy that. Wherever we're at, enjoy it. Wherever you're at right now, love that moment, but don't base your life on it. Don't base your life on it. Don't base your life on that money in your wallet. It's going to be gone after lunch today. Don't, don't, base, don't base your life. I can't be defined by the men's basketball coach, but I've done that for a long time, and so it felt weird to take that title off. You know, we all have temporary titles, right? We all have temporary titles. You, you know, see, what are you right now? I'm engaged. And that's a fun, temporary title. But it's not going to be long. You're going to take that one off. And it feels weird when you take a title off. You, you know, I, I see marriages end, and you, you've seen it, when the kids move out of the home. You see marriages end when the kids move out of the home. Why is that? Because their identity, mom and dad's identity, was no longer in the marriage, it was in the kids. And so every conversation, every planned event, everything, it was all around the kids' future and not the husband and wife's future. And so when the kids move out, there is no more conversations to be had. Because those conversations, when they, they're over. See, the identity of the marriage was found in the children instead of in the love between the husband and the wife. See, if you're retired, everything you were was defined by your job. And so now that I'm retired, then who am I? I I'm worthless. And that, that's absolutely not true at all. In fact, I believe our retired people of our society here in America, it's awesome that we have the ability to live life without drawing a paycheck. Do you know what kind of asset that is to a church, to a school, to a community? To not have to draw a paycheck, but, the, but then can give your, your, your wealth of knowledge and your skills to a community? Man, I'm telling you, I, I would not have been the coach that I was without a retired man who took me under his wing, had coached basketball for 30 years, and then he came in for six or eight years and mentored me and taught me. I would not be who I am today in that genre. High school students, we're seeing you guys leave church when you go to college. Why is that? Because your identity of who you were in Jesus was found in your friends going to church? Or was found in your youth pastor? Or was found in your parents, Jesus? But we didn't have an identity in Christ for ourselves. If we did, we'd be in church no matter where we're at. I want to ask you this. What happens when you discover that your identity is temporary? What happens when you lose that thing that we were wrapping ourselves up in, right? Right? What happens if someone else gets the job that we were really wanting, right? What happens when someone else is promoted and we thought that was going to be 
us. What happens when, God forbid, our families fall apart? Families are amazing, but they cannot be the sole person of who we are. What happens if that relationship that you're in right now ends? Or the friends leave you? Are we definitionless? Are we now nobody? What about this? What if you get injured? What if you're sick? Are you no longer who you once were? I saw a young man this last year go through this very thing. Uh, they, his family, he was growing at a, a really fast rate, and they thought he had this disease, and he was a really big basketball player. Kid was 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, and uh, he's a junior in high school this year, but last year as a sophomore, he was 6'5", 6 6 6. Uh, his brother's really looking to play Division I basketball. His brother's a couple years older than him, and he said that's what he wanted to do. He was in the gym every day. And then all of a sudden, his heart, he started having some issues. He began to run tests, and the doctors began to tell this young man, you may have to give up basketball. If you continue on this path, you may die. So they said, we're not conclusive yet. They, weren't, they hadn't come to their diagnosis, but they were just trying to prepare this young man. And I watched him go through depression for three weeks. And I began to listen to his speech. He, be, he began to get a little suicidal. And I remember telling his parents, I will be there if you want me to be. And they were talking to me about this. I said, I'll be there when the diagnosis comes down. I want to be a part. If you need me, I want to be a part of this process because the basketball does not define this young man. And I looked at him and I said, you are more than basketball. I said, in two years, you're probably going to be done. Six years at the most. This is very soon this little phase of your life is gone and then the rest of your life is ahead of you so do not put everything you are but I watched him he'd put everything into it but how many times that's just an example there how many times I watched a girl tear her ACL best basketball player in her program tore her ACL who was she after that I told her sweet girl you are more than this little sport that we're playing and I love it try and win every day but you're more than that See, what happens when we discover, what they discovered is what they were putting their lives into is very temporary. And come on, we all have that. Layoffs happen. That's a reality in the business world. Businesses change. Family, things happen. Life happens. People make decisions. But what happens if you get injured or sick? You are not defined by your health. We are more than our health here on this earth. Does our temporary status change our eternal value? I want to ask us that today. Does our temporary status change our eternal value? Or does our value go way beyond the temporary things on this earth? And I think sometimes this is our thought. I need to be this somebody in order to matter, right? I'm going to college, I'm doing it. I'm, going, I'm studying, I'm working hard, and I need this. I need to achieve this, right? I need to be this in order to matter on this earth. And no, that is not true. You know what we need? We need to find our identity in Christ to matter on this earth. Well, all we need is Jesus to be somebody. That's all we, that's all we need. And I really want to get this into our hearts today, is what happens when what we belong to reveals itself and we find out, whoa, that was temporary. Whoa, I was spending a lot of time. I was really worried about that. That was temporary. See, my, my job is revealing itself to me. See, th this is temporary. Man, I, I can't tell you, a as a high school principal, how many times I watch mom and dad, junior year, senior year, begin to reality sink in. My child is leaving. And of course, the high school student reminds them, I'm leaving. You know, they don't help. The, you know, they don't, they don't console mom and dad. They don't pat mom and dad. It's okay. I'll visit occasionally. You know, they don't do that. Ah, ah, ah. You know, I mean, they kind of hurt the process there a little. But, you know, it, it is so difficult to watch parents discover, whoa, this phase of life that I've been given my heart, soul, blood, everything, <laughs> kidneys, you know, just everything, you know, for the last 18, 20, 24 years is temporary. Kids move off and it reveals itself. What happens when everything we're putting our hope into is gone or it's broken or it's frustrating? Right, you see a lot of people, we're in a health kick here in, in America. You know, I don't know if you've discovered this, everything is unhealthy today, right? 
New study out. Air is unhealthy. Water is unhealthy, right? Eating is unhealthy. Don't eat, drink anything. I mean, just a, it doesn't matter what it is. We turn around, everything is unhealthy. But what happens if you're giving yourself to, to a healthy body or, or your image, and then you discover you can no longer work out? Or you discover that because of your body's changing, you, that that won't work anymore. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. I want to get into the heart of this thing here. Colossians chapter 3, you, you know, the apostle Paul, he lived this, right? An identity in Christ. He lived this. He literally did not care about anything. Right? You, you can beat me, you can throw me in prison, you can persecute me, you can talk bad about me, you can gossip about me. I mean, he just did. From prison, he was writing letters. From prison, he was changing churches. I mean, he's like, cool. In prison, he's praising the Lord. I mean, here is a guy whose identity you can see was wrapped up in Jesus, not where he was at, not his status, not, not any, not his money. He, he didn't care. Look at this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is your life see look at this Christ is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory two things two things in this passage that that Paul says to us number one our identity has to be found in Christ period verse 3 for you died and your life is now hidden in Christ see is Jesus a part of our lives or is Jesus the part of our lives is Jesus a part of our lives or is he the, is he the foundation? Is he the life? See, is he what we're living for every day? See, Jesus should not be what we take a time out for on Sunday to pay homage to. You know, he is who we are to be living for. He's the thing. He's not a thing. He is, he, he, it's, the, it's our job. Our job isn't the thing. He is the thing. So number one, he's to be our life, our identity, period. Number two. Paul is saying here that eternal is the focus, not temporary, right? Eternity is the focus, not temporary things. Set, he, says, he says, set your minds, set your minds on things above. How, but how often, right? Does, does this thing here get our minds set, our worries, our frustrations? And it's important that we put things in the right categories, See, eternity doesn't move and it lasts forever, but temporary is temporary. It doesn't last. And I know that we know this, but knowing it and living it are two different things. And the fact that temporary is all we know, right? Every day we're just saturated. Our lives, we are, we are saturated with temporary. This is, this is where we live. We're reminded about temporary. Temporary hits us in the face every day. You know, we get, get caught up in it because it's where we live. I mean, you, you know, our, our physical bodies. I got, I got tennis elbow this last year, and I wasn't even playing tennis. I didn't know what's up with that. And this, you know, I mean, we're just reminded about these temporary bodies all the time. And so we can get wrapped up into it. And I know we're emotional people and we have emotional attachments. But are we putting our hope and our effort and our identity into temporary? Now, in my mind, if I'm setting my mind on things above, then it's easy to think I don't have to do anything here on this earth, right? If I'm setting my mind on things above, I don't need a job. I don't need to go to school. I don't need to do anything right. I can pray. I can read my Bible. I can put on a little YouTube reckless love, or I, I can put a little Jesus, Jesus, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I was a little jealous of, of the guy singing. It was, it was really good. And, 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 but, but, you know, it could, be, it could be easy to think I don't have to worry about anything at all. But I think actually the opposite should happen. If I'm in, in Christ and that's who I am, then I should do everything as under the Lord to the best of my abilities, right? I think we should be the biggest winner. I think we should do our best. I think we should make the most impact on our jobs, in our schools, on this earth. And so I think if our identity is found in Christ, I think we actually should be achieving a lot of things here on this earth, but we just don't care about them because it's all for him. See, finding our identity in Christ doesn't mean we go and hum and sit in the corner and quit our jobs. Well, now I'm spiritual. No, you're not spiritual. You're lazy. Get a job. Do something. Be productive, right? 
See, achievement was designed by God, but it was meant to be based in God. God put us on this earth to produce, achieve, all this kind of stuff, right? Genesis 128, be fruitful, multiply. Our job should be very productive. Our family should be very important. Our kids should be very important. But, but, but we should be, the foundation should be in him. Paul goes on in verse 23 and 24 of Colossians chapter 3. He says, whatever you do, work is unto the Lord, right? We're not doing it for man, we're doing it for the Lord. Paul, Paul says, as we set our, our mind on things above, we actually should be making a massive difference here on this earth. Our identity and motive is all for God, not some earthly accolades. And here, here, here's something I want to throw out there today. Hold on to things with a loose grip here on this earth. Hold on to things with a loose grip and don't let those things define you. Let God define you. Let our future in him define us. Let our present in him define us. See, the things on this earth are what we do for him. They're not who we are. The things that we do aren't who we are. And I heard this the other day and it stuck with me and I can't get it out of my head and I hope it ministers to you, but it ministered to me. And, 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 and a guy, a pastor said this. He said, life is all about change. And there is no change without loss. Think about that. The dating phase, we're excited about the marriage phase, but something's got to be lost. For kids to move on, there has to be loss. For retirement, there has to be loss. In order to move on, there has to be loss. Change is hard because change equals loss. Change equals loss. Therefore, life can be hard. Think about the time when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was about to leave the disciples, right? He was about to go and sit at the right hand of the Father. Change was about to equal loss for him. But Jesus in Luke twenty two forty two, 42, he said, Father, if you're willing, take this cup of suffering for me. Yet what? Not my will, but yours be done. You ever, you ever wonder why the disciples fell asleep and he didn't? <laughs> He knew what was about to happen in the next 24 hours. What must life have been like to know the future and to know what everybody was thinking, right? I think a lot of times we think that would be awesome. No, it would be terrible. Because Jesus knew everything. When Jesus picked his friends, he knew who was going to stab him in the back. And he picked him anyway. That's amazing. Jesus knew when he was praying that prayer, not my will, but yours be done. He was about to be whipped, that he was about to be nailed. He was about to be put on, this, the, on the cross. But yet, Jesus' identity was found in one thing, doing the will of the Father. Not in what would happen to him here on this earth. Wow, that's powerful. His identity wasn't in his position on this earth. His identity was in doing the will of God. Our identity has to come from doing the will of God. I love the song, I don't know if you've heard it, I'm Not a Victim. Have you heard that song, I'm Not a Victim? You need to look it up on YouTube. I just, I love it. If there's anything this generation needs to know, this world needs to know is we're not a victim. We're a victor. We're not a victim. It, it, it goes, I'm not a victim. I live with a vision. I'm not an orphan. I'm a child of God. That's our identity. That's our identity. See, being a victim is a result of holding on to our temporary status. There are no victims in heaven, only victors in heaven. See, victim is a result of our temporary status here on this earth. And here is what happens. The bigger God is in our lives, the smaller everything else gets. But you know, the smaller ever, the God is in our lives, the bigger everything else gets. You ever been caught up in a situation that I mean in our head it was huge, right? I mean it was dramatic, it was huge, and we saw no, nothing past it. And then, you know, the more you begin to finally realize, wait a minute, I got to give this to God. Oh yeah, that's what I should have done in the first place. And then we begin to give it to him, and the bigger he becomes, and then the, this, the smaller this thing begins to become. See, we're not a victim. God has made us a victory. As we bring this all together, if you would, turn to James chapter 1. And I'm, I, want, I want to read the weirdest verse in the Bible. James chapter 1, verse 2. I want to read the weirdest verse in the Bible as we begin to bring this together today. I hope this is encouraging you. I hope this is ministering to you. James chapter 1, verse 2. I don't know if you ever read this and thought it was weird like, like I do, right? When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I think that's the last thing I ever consider. 
Whenever trouble comes my way, that's the last thing I'm going to consider. Great joy is never on the top of my list. And it says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Well, there's, a, there's that growth. Growth equals loss. Change equals loss. So, so let it grow for when your indenture is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. How can we do that? How can we do that? Well, it all depends on where your strength comes from. It all depends on where identity comes from. And when our identity comes from the Lord, when our strength comes from the Lord, then absolutely I can count it all joy. But see, if I need my strength to come from this situation, if I need the strength to come from my job, if I need the strength to come from my health, if I need, see, that, then, I, then that is where my source of my joy comes from. See, our strength has to come from eternal, not temporary. And that's what James was talking about here. When our strength comes from eternal, then we can count it all joy. But if I'm trying to be temporary, there's no way I'm thinking about joy in a difficult situation. Maybe if I have this experience on the outside, I'll feel whole. That's what we do, right? Maybe if I have this experience on the outside, maybe if I have this relationship, I will be somebody. Maybe if I have this amount of money, and we always have this goal, right? I gotta get this amount of money. And you know what's funny is, if, if you reach the goal of money, there's always a bigger goal of money, right? And once I get the house paid off, I get to this and I get to that, and then it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't do it. Why? Because our identity cannot be wrapped up in that. But you know, I think we can feel that way here at church too. I think we can feel that way here at church too. I need people to notice me here at the church. Or I'm not, I'm not noticed. Or, or, or maybe I'm not on the in crowd here at the church, which I don't know what the in crowd is. It's just the crowd we're not a part of. And so we're mad at that. And you know, but, but see, we, we think we need some identity even here at the church. We don't need people to notice us. We need the God to notice us. And you know what? He already does. And he just wants us to notice him back. He just wants us to find our identity in him. And here's the idea I want to end with. What happens? That's what I want to bring together. What happens if what you're chasing after right now, today when you came to church, that thing last month, last week, last year, what happens when that thing that we're chasing after right now, what happens if we don't ever catch it? I want you to think about that. And my goal was to lose 100 pounds. And what happens if you never lose the 100 pounds? My goal is to have uh, $20,000 in the bank. What happens if you never get that? My goal is to be married by the time I'm 24. What happens if you don't get that? My goal is to have my career by then. What happens if you don't? What happens if what you're chasing after right now you never get? This type of family, I want it to look like this. I want to work out. I want to do this. Because here's what I want you to know. When you chase after God, you catch him every time. When we chase after him, we catch him every time. Jesus has to be our number one chase. He has to be our identity. It doesn't mean that we aren't working hard on this earth. It doesn't mean we don't have goals here on this earth. Once again, if our identity is in Christ, I think we should have all kinds of goals. I think God should fill our heart with all kinds of purpose. I think he should fill us with all kinds of motivation to do things. But Matthew 6, has to be our goal. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto us. But once again, because we live on a temporary earth, it's very easy to stop seeking him first. It's very easy for him no longer to be our number one pursuit. See, our identity is everything. What we're chasing after the most is our identity. It's the thing that's the most important to us, right? It's always my favorite thing when people say, I don't have time for that or I don't have money for that. You know what's funny? If you were to do a, a study, you would find out in your life that you always had time, money, and resources to do what you wanted to do, and you never had time, money, or resources to do what you didn't want to do. It's amazingly convenient how that works out. Because the thing that we care about the most is our identity, and it's what we are pursuing and make a priority. What is your identity? It's easy to get caught up in the temporary things of this earth. It is what defines us temporary because our flesh can skew the need, to be, the need to be significant. When God created us to be significant because we're creating his image. The enemy and the flesh is really good at perverting everything that God created, right? That's what the enemy and the flesh is good at. And so we exchange the amazing permanent nature of God for something temporary and silly here on earth this earth. 
as we bring this together eternity is a long time it's forever and temporary isn't very long it's temporary and we're eternal spirits we can't let our temporary bodies control where we're headed in life and what gets all of our time and my challenge today is this are we trying to fill an eternal need with a temporary fix are we trying to fill an eternal need with a temporary fix because Jesus is the only way to really figure this life out make him your number one pursuit this week make him your number one pursuit this Christmas season that's what you said up here make him your number one pursuit this next year and it's amazing how our identity begins to grow in confidence because that is where it was really supposed to be because the bigger he gets the smaller everything else gets who am I I'm God's man who are you I'm God's woman who are you I'm a child of the king that's my identity not anything else and what I'm doing here on this earth he is using me to do my identity is what I get my life from my purpose from and there's a lot of things that are going to come in and out of my life there's a lot of things that are going to come in and out of my life and I hold them with a loose grip I appreciate them I'm grateful for them I thank God for them every day but I understand that everything on this earth is temporary and my prayer is not my will just like Jesus but your will be done who am I I'm a child of God Did y'all get something out of this this morning Let's stand here this morning. Let's pray over our week. God, we are so grateful for your encouragement today. God, we thank you that as we chase after you, we catch you every time. Because you're right there looking to chase back. And God, I pray that, that today is... Maybe, maybe there's some people in here who have gotten their identities caught up in their jobs or, or their families or a lot of great things. But God, forgive us if we've wrapped our lives up in temporary things because God, we want to wrap our lives up in you. Jesus, we want you to be our number one pursuit. And I pray that that this week that we would refocus and and that we would be used by you in a mighty way in our schools, on our college campuses as we're doing finals, God, as we're, as we go into this break, God, that, that everything that we do, that you would be our identity. God, who are we? We're nothing more than your children being used by you on this earth. God, use us to make a difference in Russellville and the surrounding areas. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a good week. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. If you would like more teaching, you can visit our website at www.rccenter.org or download our app to your device. The Russellville Christian Center is located at 305 Lakefront Drive. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or if you would like more information, please call 479-968-7965.